Okay, so let's continue on with uh, existential proofs, and we stopped on uh, what a constructive proof is last time, and the idea of a constructive proof is literally you're just going to need to uh, find the witness, right? Which is that C. If you write, see me write these symbols, that's just the word such that P of C. Right, and so it actually has that property. So an example of something like this, of just trying to find it, is there is a, there are how about there are irrationals such that an irrational times an irrational is equal to a rational. So some of the proofs in the in your homework was things like you know a rational plus an irrational is, is irrational. But on the other hand, there's actually some irrationals such that if you multiply the irrationals, it's rationals. Here's proof: uh, square root of two is irrational, and square root of two times the square root of two, which is simply two, is rational. And so this here would be your witness. It's what's an irrational times an irrational is irrational. So this is your example that you have found. So you have to literally find one of them to have the feature that you're interested in. Now, a non-constructive proof is this idea of you can't, when we say uh, constructive, you've actually find the witness and non-constructive is you don't find the witness or a witness rather you can still show there exists a p of x where that's true um, so the example on this one of this one is similar to the other one There exist irrationals such that a irrational raised to the power of an irrational is rational. All right, now let's see if we can find it and proof. And we're not going to be able to find the exact witness, but we're going to get some cases where this has to happen. First off, again, there's only one irrational number that we have. It's still the square root of 2. So we can try that. So the square root of 2 is irrational. Okay, if that's true, then the square root of 2 to the square root of 2, well, there's only two possibilities for any number, right? It is a real. And all reals are either rational or irrational. Those are the two cases, and it's actually, this is an exclusive or, right? It's actually an XOR. And, um, any number that you have is either going to be rational or irrational. So those are two cases. So case one, square root of two, two the square root of two is rational. Well, if indeed square root of two to the square root of two is irrational, we're done, right? We have found the irrational to an irrational power that is exactly rational. You've actually found it. But I don't actually know if it is rational. Uh, the other is a second case. So if it is case one, we're done. We have found an irrational to an irrational that's rational. Case two, which is square root of two to the square root of two, is rather irrational. Well, I haven't found what I wanted. What I want is an irrational to an irrational. What I want is this whole irrational to an irrational being rational. So case one, I would have found it. But if it's not rational, that means it's irrational. But if that's true, I've actually found the new irrational number. 
So I'm going to consider this new irrational number and raise it to square root of 2, which is irrational. But power to power means we multiply those two numbers. That's the square root of 2 squared, which is equal to 2, which is also rational. So case 1 is square root of 2 to the square root of 2 is rational. Case 2 is rather that square root of 2 to the square root of 2 to the square root of 2 is rational. So what happens is square root of 2 to the square root of 2 exclusive or, right? Square root of 2 to the square root of 2 2 to the square root of 2 are our example of irrational to the power of an irrational equaling a rational. Now here's the thing, when we look at this, so basically we're done. Right, we've proved it. So the idea behind this is this. We could let's say that this idea of being irrational or irrational is rational is like a murderer, right? So what's happened? Uh, either person one is a murderer, exclusive or person two is a murderer. Either way, I don't know who it is. If it's one, it's not two. If it's two, it's not one. I don't know who it is. It's either it either Mark's the killer or John's the killer, exclusive or and. If it's Mark, it's not John. If it's John, it's not Mark. And if I know this to be true, right? So I don't know which it is is the example, but either way, I can say I have someone that's the killer. So same way. It's either this one exclusive or this one. I don't care really which. I can go ahead and say that there exists a irrational to an irrational that's irrational. Have I found the witness exactly? Do I know if it's this one or do I know if it's this one? No. I've narrowed it to being between the two, but it really doesn't matter when I'm saying I just want to know existence. And so this is a non-constructive proof. I haven't actually found the witness. I've narrowed it down between two, but that's good enough to say there exists. So that's our techniques on you know the existence proofs, whether you constructive, find it exactly, find the one witness where it's true. That's supposed to be an L, isn't it? Whoops. Rational. So either we find it specifically or we do some sort of work around it where we can narrow it down but at least prove that it exists whether or not we've actually found the true witness. Now another variation of an existence proof is the uniqueness proof. Now, in a uniqueness proof is essentially its existence. Um, what we do is we still have there exists someone such that the property holds, but we add an extra feature. And for everyone, right, if they also have that property, that implies that they have actually are simply X. You could also say this is logically the same thing as there exists a person that has the property, so this first part is existence. And for everyone else, if they are different than X, then they do not have that property. And close that parenthesis and then close that parenthesis. So either way you want to say it, the idea of an existence proof is part A, which is this part right here, is you prove existence. And then part B, which is this part right here, and we have and, which is right there, and we would prove uniqueness. The idea of proving uniqueness, well, that's just a normal implication, right? Uh, the top one's nice. You would simply say you assume that you have a number that satisfies the property, then, given that, show that that means that that number must be what you have already found. You already found your witness. Or another approach would be for anything else that is not your witness, you would assume that and then show that those things do not have what you're talking about. 
So you first have to find your witness or prove that the witness in some way exists, like we have to constructive or non-constructive. And then the second technique is either, hey, if you assume that you have a number that has the property, show that it must have been the witness you already found. Or the contrapositive is assume that you have a number that is not what you found and then show all of those do not have the property. Either way, we go through the two of these. We have existence is this component, and then uniqueness is the second component. So it's really just, again, there isn't anything new. We're doing just the normal existence, which we've learned how to do. Either you find it or you find show that it somehow it exists. Or, and the second one is an implication, which you can show directly, uh, contrapositive. You could even use contradiction if you want, because it's just a straightforward implication on proving that component. So those are all the types of proofs that um, I'm interested in you being able to do. Uh, the next couple of videos will, one, we'll talk about uh, proof strategies, and then the third video I'll talk about uh, you needing to, what you need to do to prepare, prepare, to prepare for the exam.